why don't we get started. So, um, the, this course is mostly going to be about the theory of uh, how companies, or what economists call firms, behave. And um, basically, a firm or a company is a sort of group of physical assets, uh, people, and technology, which uh, we tr typically treat as sort of a coherent, profit-maximizing individual, and that's the way we're going to uh, analyze it throughout most of the course. Um, and we'll pretty rarely in the rest of the course sort of look inside of the black box of the firm to actually think about how it is that firms come to maximize profit or whether they actually do a very good job of achieving that goal. Um, and so I want to sort of start off the course by spending a little bit of time looking inside of companies and thinking about how they're structured and uh, whether they actually accomplish uh, the goals that we assume that they try to accomplish. Um, and uh, we'll sort of go through some of the basic questions, which I think will be useful things to have in the back of your mind later, such as what are firms as uh, legal entities? What should firms maximize and what do they in fact maximize? Uh, how do conflicts within firms inhibit their ability uh, to maximize profits? Um, how can they be governed uh, and financed in order to try to limit some of these conflicts? Uh, why do firms exist in the first place? Why can't everything happen through exchange in the marketplace? Um, and I'll talk about some theories of answers to that question, as well as uh, some reasons why that might not be such a uh, great question, actually, in the first place. So, um, firms uh, in most developed countries come in six basic varieties, though there's uh, variations on these. So the first is called the sole proprietorship, and this is, uh, you know, what you typically think of as a mom and pop store. Uh, you know, uh, probably Z and H uh, is a sole proprietorship, uh, as well as many of the franchises of large national chains. So many McDonald's are actually sole proprietorships, even though they're part of, uh, they seem to be part of a large corporation, they're actually owned by an individual uh, who runs that McDonald's store. Um, and basically a sole proprietorship is just an extension of an individual. So it's really nothing other than a person uh, just selling and uh, buying stuff for themselves. Um, a partnership is sort of one step of remove from that, which is when a group of individuals get together and say they're going to have a business together, then they all assume liability for anything that's done by them as a group. So partnerships have unlimited liability. That means that if they take on a debt as a group, then the people who've led to them, if they don't pay the money back, can go after any of the people to try to recover that debt. And if the company as a whole does something illegal, all of them are legally responsible for that. Um, and the partnerships are most typically uh, used for professional services, such as lawyers, accountants, uh, and other um, professional groups. Doctors are sometimes uh, in partnership. Uh, the next level of sort of corporatization is a privately held corporation. Uh, and I'll talk more about corporations on the next slide, but the key difference between a private and a public corporation is a private corporation is held by a very small number of people, and there's no public price at which the shares of the company trade. It's just owned by a small number of people who may engage in transactions with one another or other potential buyers, uh, but, but in a very private way. Um, then, what sort of will be our default assumption about what the companies we think about in the course are is publicly held corporations. So a publicly held corporation trades on the stock market. It's any of the you know, big name companies that you think of, that you hear about on the news. Um, there, then there's not-for-profit uh, corporations and something that's related but not the same, which is a cooperative. Cooperative is owned by the people who uh, are customers or workers of the company, rather than being owned by the public, but it does have uh, shares. Um, and not-for-profits are tax-exempt, 
but as a result can't disperse profits. So any money inside the company cannot go out to pay for uh, remuneration for someone who's given money to the company. So anyone who gives the money to the company loses that money, basically. And they're very highly regulated. Cooperatives can disperse the profits that they make, but they can only do so to people who are customers or workers for the company. Um, and finally, and this is uh, decreasingly common in advanced countries, but there are government-owned uh, uh, enterprises as well. I guess it was decreasingly common until very recently because uh, you know, during the financial crisis, a number of banks and some uh, industrial firms were nationalized by governments to keep them solvent. What is OECD? OECD, sorry. OECD is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And it's a shorthand for a, a rich country. So the OECD c countries include all the countries in Europe, uh, the US, um, and uh, Japan, uh, and a few other wealthy Asian countries. I think Korea is now in the OECD. Um, OK, so we're primarily going to focus on corporations in this course. So I just want to uh, do a little bit more of background on you know, what's the nature of a corporation. Um, so uh, Matt Green, Matt Green, right here. yeah, hey, um, what are the defining uh, legal features that make something a corporation rather than any of those other things that I said? You know, um, is it just like a lot of ways the size or like who is who is owning and who is contributing to the company? Um, well, so the, the, key, the key feature of a corporation as compared to a partnership is that corporations, unlike partnerships, are individuals separate from the people who are the partners. Um, that is, the, the corporation is, for all basic legal purposes, a person. And just like a person, a corporation can declare bankruptcy. Uh, you know, a partnership can't declare bankruptcy. If they don't pay their debts, you can go after any of the people. Just like they, you know, if I, if you made a loan to me, you could come after me. But if you made a loan to my corporation, you couldn't come after me, because the corporation is a person separate from me. And and they have the rights of individuals, and they have some of the responsibilities of individuals. They're chartered by the states, and they have this limited liability uh, property, which is that only the money that's inside the corporation can be taken by people who've lent money to the corporation. That's sort of the key defining feature of a corporation as compared to other forms of organization we talked about. Um, and uh, also, if the company does bad things and it gets sued, only the money inside the company can be held responsible for that. The, the, the owners have no responsibility for the misdeeds of the company. Um, and sort of as a, the cost of having maybe what you could call the benefit of limited liability is that corporations have to pay a corporation income tax, which partnerships don't have to pay. So they have to pay a special income tax as corporations, and then if they send something out as dividends or they give money, they you have to pay taxes again on that. So some people say corporations are double tax, whereas if you own a business yourself, you just pay income tax on the money that you get, right? Yeah. Why are um, corporations chartered by states and not the federal government? It's an old tradition. It goes back actually to the you know British rule when the states were. In. So I, I don't I um, I don't know if there I don't think there are any corporations that are chartered, chartered by the federal government. It's actually a problem because you know the states have a big incentive to compete for the corporations and they'll try to you know have less and less regulations to get the corporations chartered in their state. So Delaware is infamous for this. So all credit card companies are based in Delaware, basically, because basically Delaware lets you do whatever you want to consumers, charge you whatever, charge them whatever interest rates you want to charge them, use whatever deceptive, you know, terms you want in your credit card stuff. They want all the business from the credit card companies in their state. Um, so, uh, uh, Cody, do you know what are the two main ways that corporations finance themselves? Get money to. Stocks. Absolutely. That's what we'll call equity. That's right. <coughs> and what's the other way? Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay. Like yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so 
The two ways are, as Cody said, um, as Cody said, uh, there's equity, which is, well, first let me go through debt. So there's, debt comes in two forms, bonds and bank loans. So a bank can make a loan to you, uh, and you make a promise to repay that loan, and a major benefit of uh, taking out a loan is you can deduct from your corporation income tax the interest that you pay on that loan. And that greatly reduces the cost of being financed by debt. Um, and basically what debt is, is the corporation co promises to pay back a certain amount of money, and if it doesn't uh, default on that, that's it, right? But if it does default, the um, bank can come in and can seize whatever uh, the company owns. But not more than that because it is limited liability, right? And because banks are very afraid of getting their money uh, like wasted or the company taking too much risks that might wipe them out, they tend to put in what are called restrictive covenants, which are all sorts of restrictions on what the company is allowed to do as long as it has this loan from the bank until it pays back the money. Um, and uh, rather than getting a loan from a bank, especially if you're a big corporation, what you could do is you could do what's called float <coughs> bonds, which means that you basically uh, give out these pieces of paper that are IOUs, right, and you sell them off to members of the public, just like you would in an open market with stocks or something like that. And so many companies, rather than going to a bank, which might be more expensive, if they're a large company, might float uh, bonds to the public because that allows you to access a much broader pool of capital from the public rather than just uh, the money that any particular bank has to lend to you. Um, now, uh, the second form, which Cody pointed out, is equity or, or stocks, uh, which has the tax disadvantage that you can't deduct from your income any profits that you pay out to the stockholder. <laughs> unlike the interest that you pay out to the bondholder. Um, and the way that stock works is you get money from someone in exchange for shares in the company. And a share means you're entitled to the dividends of the company, that is, any profits that it pays out in the future. You're entitled to voting rights in the company, and I'll talk more about the sort of things that you vote on, but basically it's stuff like who gets elected to the corporate board, and you know whether the company merges with another company, for example. And, uh, and you choose the, the board of directors by that voting. And the board of directors are a group of people who have the responsibility of looking out for the interests of the people who uh, own the shares of the company. Yeah? Um, so do you prefer shares have like voting rights? Uh, often not. <clears throat> it's complicated. So preferred shares, that's a good question. Uh, Edward. 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 Um, yeah, so preferred shares are a bit different than common shares, and they're actually not very common. So the, the number of companies that have a significant number of preferred shares is quite small. So in most cases, we can just sort of ignore that. But I think the best way to think about it in the cases when it does exist is it's sort of halfway between debt and equity. It has a little bit more control rights than debt does, a little bit less covenants than debt does, a little bit less voting rights than equity does, et cetera. Um, and, yeah, so that's what I, that was the third thing I was going to say. So there's, there's other methods which are between debt and equity, including preferred shares and what are called convertible debt, which is a new thing that they're doing for these financial companies where it's debt, but then if the company really starts to get into trouble, you can be sort of first to turn it into equity. Yeah? What's a preferred share? Um, good question. Yeah, it's something that's halfway between debt and equity, basically. I mean, the exact terms of preferred shares are complicated. Usually it means that, like, if the company starts to go bust, you, like, all the other equity holders might get wiped out, and then you might still be able to get something, even though you can't get as much as the debt holders can get. So you sort of have some debt claim on the company if it starts to go bankrupt, but you don't, but you you also don't like just get paid back a fixed amount. It depends on how well the company's doing. So, okay. Um, 